Since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, man has relied on one primary source of energy, fossil fuels. As our global population grows, so will our energy needs and fossil fuels won't be around forever. Scientists like Nobel laureate George Ola and Professor Surya Prakash are hunting for renewable alternative energy sources that could be used once Earth's fossil fuel supply runs out. Ola and Prakash recently won a $1 million prize from the Israeli government for their work on a groundbreaking alternative fuel concept known as the methanol economy. We visited Professor Prakash's lab at the University of Southern California's Hydrocarbon Research Institute to learn more. This institute is very much involved in creating carbon-based products, fuels and feedstocks once we run out of oil and gas. So what we are thinking is, sun is going to be there for the next four and a half billion years. So earth does not have basically an energy problem, we have an energy storage and energy carrier problem. So if we can tap the sun's energy or wind energy, we can easily make electricity. But the battery technologies to store electricity is pretty bad. So what we are thinking is why can't we take these alternative energy sources which are not carbon based. CO2 we can take from any point sources such as coal burning power plants or cement plants or breweries and water we split water with electrical energy through a process called electrolysis of water make hydrogen and CO2 and hydrogen can be combined to make a very simple molecule called methanol. Methanol is a one carbon alcohol. It could be used in your internal combustion engine as a high octane fuel. In fact, methanol is the fuel of choice for all race cars. And methanol can also be used to make a compound called dimethyl ether by dehydration. And dimethyl ether is considered the best diesel substitute. Since methanol and dimethyl ether do not have carbon-carbon bonds, they don't make any particulate emissions, they're very clean. Methanol can be converted to ethylene and propylene by a process that was developed in our institute in the 80s. And once you make ethylene and propylene, you can make all the products currently made out of petroleum oil. It could also be used as a fuel in direct oxidation fuel cells. So a, a methanol fuel cell is a methanol air battery. Methanol can be oxidized in you know, a certain catalyst, noble metal catalyst, and the air could be used as an oxidant. And believe it or not, using methanol as a fuel in a fuel cell, we could produce electricity at room temperature under ambient pressure. Okay, we have built devices like that. So it has all these phenomenal possibilities. And the beauty is methanol can be made from recycled carbon dioxide and any kind of energy. So what I'm trying to tell you is, once we run out of oil and gas, mankind can keep on doing this forever, the CO2 recycling concept. You can ask me the question, why this is not, you know, people are not adopting this technology. Oil is still available, you know, oil is complex hydrocarbons, you know, which has all this calorific value to generate energy, to make important chemicals and feedstocks. It's a bargain. Oil is still a bargain for mankind. But once we realize that we have a crisis, humankind is generally reacts to crisis very slowly. Humankind is not proactive, only reactive. This is our problem. So it's all chemistry. Ultimately, I believe that chemistry is the central science. You know, chemistry is the one which is going to solve big problems for mankind. So we need to come up with technologies to create fuels and feedstocks. And we cannot, as uh, you know, living beings on Earth, divest ourselves from carbon. We, you and I are made of carbon. Without carbon, without CO2, there is no life on Earth. So we need to understand that. If you understand that, and if you understand that, that we have no energy problem, only energy storage and energy carrier problem, we can uh, uh, solve problems.